Item number nine. Item number nine, proclamation recognizing El Paso County's proud Western heritage, Commissioner Lojinos Gonzalez, Jr., Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, and if we can get the members up uh, to come and speak on this, I would. As, as they're coming up, I just want to say you look outstanding in that hat. Thank you it's, very much. Wow. Well, <laughs> It improves your looks. You should 13%. see my boots. You should see my boots. So, so uh, I move to approve a proclamation recognizing El Paso County's proud Western heritage. Whereas El Paso County is proud of our Western history and culture and recognizes how our past continues to shape the Pikes Peak region. And whereas events such as the Colorado Springs Western Street Breakfast, the Rodeo Parade, the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo, and the El Paso County Fair preserve and promote our wonderful heritage. And whereas on June 19, 2019, the annual Colorado Springs Western Street Breakfast along Tejon Street at Pikes Peak Avenue will once again bring the community together for a fun-filled send-off for the Pikes Peak Range Riders, whose annual ride around Pikes Peak is a cherished community tradition which serves to promote the rodeo as a wonderful centerpiece of summer and an important economic driver for the entire region. And whereas the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo was started in 1937 by Spencer Penrose, an El Paso County pioneer whose legacy includes the Broadmoor Hotel, the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, the Broadmoor Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, and the ongoing philanthropic contributions of the El Palmar Foundation. And whereas the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo Parade on July 9, 2019, opens one of the nation's oldest and most prestigious rodeos with performances running from July 10 through July 13, 2019, and whereas the El Paso County Fair is celebrating its 114th anniversary when it opens July 13 and runs until July 20, 2019 at the county fairgrounds in Calhan. And whereas the values defined by the Pikes Peak Range Riders, the Cowboy Way, and the Old West are not a way of life limited to nostalgia since community gatherings, horses, rodeo challenges, and parades are woven into the fabric of El Paso County and the Pikes Peak region. Now, therefore, the Board of El Paso County Commissioners, in recognition of upcoming events celebrating our Western heritage, urges local businesses to join various sp special events and wear Western attire on the days of the events. Done this sixth day of June 2019 at Colorado Springs, Colorado, the Board of County Commissioners of El Paso County, Colorado, Mark Waller, Chair, Lojinos Gonzalez, Jr., Vice Chair, Stan Vanderworth, Holly Williams, Cammie Bremer, members, attested to by Chuck Broman, County Clerk and Recorder. Can I have a second, please? Second. All right. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this uh, resolution? Please come forward. I think this is where we wait. Yes. <laughs> yes this is, there we go. This is where people with cowboy hats this come is, up and say up. stuff. <laughs> In an effort to uh, gain shameless favor from the chair, I'm a DU graduate from law school there, so there you go, Mr. Chair. I'm here representing today the Pikes Peak Range Riders. I'm vice president of the board. We're thrilled to be here, and we're so pleased that you've given us this honor. The Pikes Peak Range Riders were formed in 1949. It really is an experiment when uh, Everett Conover and Kenneth Burkhart formed a group to ride around the Pikes Peak region to support the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo. Anybody with a horse and 35 bucks could join and, and ride. The next year, it, uh, it, was, it became an annual event, and it rode out after the annual street breakfast, which had been going on in Colorado Springs for some time. Back then, there were 50 to 100 people that would attend, uh, mostly supporters of the rodeo. Today, there are over 10,000 people that show up that are served by members of the armed forces who cook for us, and it's become an event that's uh, just pretty extraordinary during the summer in Colorado Springs. This year, there are 150 guys that will ride out from downtown Colorado Springs. Comes from a membership of about 200 people that uh, belong to the Pikes Peak Range Riders. We're gonna ride down to Music Meadows this year, which is just south of Westcliff. It should be a fun five-day ride. And again, in an effort to support the Colorado Springs and uh, uh, El Paso County Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo. Uh, the, the Range Riders also support several things in town that are pretty important, Latigo being one, through the Pikes Peak Range Rider Foundation. 
We support the Latigo Equestrian Center, which uh, promotes the Western way of life and teaches the Western way of life. Also, it's the home of the Pikes Peak Therapeutic Riding Community, which helps individuals through um, equine therapy, people with mental and physical disabilities, to assist them in getting over some of these disabilities. Also, the Pikes Peak Range Riders support the Pikes Peak Range Rider Pivots and the Rangerettes. And these two organizations support and uh, the, the bike speaker bus rodeo around the community, around the state of Colorado, riding the entries. They're fast paced groups and they're precision teams that are designed to promote the Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo. And again, you know about the parade. Uh, Grant Atkinson, president of the Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo, will be here to explain to you all about the parade and the events that go on with the rodeo. Again, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you this morning. Thank you. And before you leave, if you could, um, just for the record, uh, state your name and if you could sign in, we'd appreciate that as well. My name is Alan Gasper. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on behalf of this uh, proclamation? And I'm Grant Adkisson, and I'm president of the Pikes Peter Bus Rodeo. And and actually president of the Pikes Peak Range Riders as well, and Alan uh, will be our president next year. He's done a great job as vice president. Uh, our esteemed vice chair, Gonzalez, uh, did a great job. You covered about half of my speech, but I, no, no, don't be sorry, you did a great job. No, but anyway, all, um, most of you are aware the rodeo, uh, of course, is the second largest, or second longest running event in Colorado Springs itself, uh, only to the hill climb, as you said, 1937. Um, and of course has gone on um, every year except for the war years and immediately after the war then Spencer Penrose was the one that designated all the funds from that rodeo every year to go to our military needs different areas of that sometimes uh, food baskets at holiday times one of the things we got to do last year was we found there was a, a shortage with our military wives that had gone through cancer. And so we were able to furnish a number of things from them, including uh, their uh, costs for uh, wigs and many other areas. So it's a pretty broad thing. What I wanted to share with you excitingly is in 2017, we surpassed uh, $5 million that we put into our local direct uh, military needs, families, morale funds, and other areas. And last year from just four days of rodeo, uh, we were able to write checks for $189,000, our, our profit from the rodeo. So it's an exciting event, but it's also um, a huge part of our military support, and we appreciate that greatly and appreciate your support. It isn't just a Colorado Springs event. As we say, it's a Pikes Peak, rain, uh, Pikes Peak or Bus Rodeo, so we are thrilled to have all of El Paso County and other counties as well around us participate and support. Um, I would give a recommendation to all of you and your families because uh, with the addition of the uh, bull, bullfighters only bullfights and a number of other exciting things, our tickets are going fast and you can get them online. We'd recommend you uh, get on and get your tickets so you don't miss out on the rodeo this year. So um, again, that's uh, most of what we have, the dates, they, and I, I want to restrict what I say a lot because the girls of the West do it far better, and I'd like to invite them to come up. So thank you for your time, and thank you for the privilege, and thank you for the wonderful um, uh, support that you just gave us with that, uh, with that document. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Corliss Palmer. I'm a... Um, 18-year volunteer for the Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo as director of the Girls of the West. I have the best job of any volunteer for the rodeo, but I'm also the busiest. We make about 150 appearances to promote the Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo between the middle of May and the middle of July. So you can figure that out. We make several appearances many days. Um, the Girls of the West story started in 1922, and that's when the name was decided, and it's gone on since then. And so we're coming up to our 100th year, which is pretty exciting. Um, but you can go on the website for, and look at the Girls of the West and see all the past Girls of the West and see how they looked back, way back then. We've become very professional since then. Um, so the uh, girls are rodeo ambassadors, not just royalty. And um, we have, it's a two summer commitment. So we will choose this year's aid, next year's aid at the rodeo this year on Friday. It takes several months to 
um, design and have a custom seamstress make their fabulous outfits. The hats are custom made, takes several months for that as well, and the buckles. So um, then about May, March, we start with pictures and go from there. So um, the, the competition consists of horsemanship, speech, interview, and um, appearance, and it's pretty rigorous. I'll introduce the girls now. 2019 Girl of the West is Kayla Summers. She's the 20-year-old daughter of Brian and Suzanne Summers. She's a senior, she'll be a senior at the University of Northern Colorado, and she'll receive a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences, all while uh, continuing her emergency medical technician license. Um, she's a busy girl. She um, plans to continue to paramedic school and then medical school. She was a Pikes Peak Rangerette for five years and also served as El Paso County Fair Queen. She rides a paint horse named Abigail. 2019 Aid to Girl of the West is Michaela Carrico. She's the 18-year-old daughter of Chauncey and Teresa Carrico. She just graduated from Woodland Park High School and will continue her education at Lamar Community College in, um, and study equine management and horse training. And she plans to fulfill her dream eventually of becoming a rodeo commentator. She's served as many ro uh, royalty for many rodeos and she um, rides a Palomino gilding named G-Man. So please enjoy their presentation. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Kayla Summers, Girl of the West. And I'm Michaela Carrico, A to Girl of the West. We're both proud ambassadors for the Pikes Peaker Bus Rodeo. You'll see our Perkins Pink Ram truck all over town as we head out to appearances at businesses, military installations, and community events. But why do we do it? Because we are passionate about the Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo and the Western traditions that it represents. And today, we're here to tell you that Championship Rodeo is coming to town for the 79th Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo, July 10th through the 13th at the scenic Norris Penners Event Center. That's right, Kayla. I'm so excited for this year's rodeo. The Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo runs Wednesday, July 10th through Saturday, July 13th with performances at 7 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday evenings and a Saturday matinee at 12.30. There'll be four performances of Invitational Championship Rodeo and the thrilling Gold Buckle Championship round on Saturday night, where the top eight scores and eight fastest times from the qualifying events lay it all on the line for over $200,000 in prize money. It's edge of your seat excitement from the first event to the last. But wait, there's more. Don't miss the smash hit bonus event, Bullfighters Only, freestyle bullfighting, back this year and better than ever. These fearless bullfighters will be going head to head with Mexican fighting bulls to post the top scores, claim some bragging rights, all with the cash prize on the line, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday only. This all takes place at the Norris Printer's Event Center, one of the most beautiful venues in the country to enjoy the sport or rodeo. Plan to, get you, plan to get your tickets early and buy online to save time and money. The Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo is for the true fan, the first timer, and everyone in between. This Pro Tour PRCA sanctioned event will invite professional cowboys to, in, to compete in seven standard events to include saddle bronc riding, bareback riding, team roping, tie down roping, steer wrestling, barrel racing, and bull riding. The Pike Speaker Bust Rodeo has been a long standing tradition here in the Pike Speak region since 1937. And there's lots to do before the rodeo, too. Grounds open at 4 p.m. for the evening performances and 10 a.m. for the Saturday matinee. So come early, skip traffic, and enjoy all the family-friendly pre-show fun in our fan zone. There's mutton bust and tryouts, pony rides, dance lessons, and you can grab a bite to eat. Plus, there's shopping, shopping, and more shopping at this year's first <laughs> annual Hank's Marketplace, a Western shopping extravaganza located right on the grounds at the Norris Penrose Event Center Indoor Arena. So before the rodeo, be sure to stop by and check out our brand new shopping experience featuring unique clothing, art, jewelry, and much more. But then, get ready to rodeo. All performances begin with the Pikes Peak Range Rider Pivots and Pikes Peak Rangerette Drill Teams, followed by the Fort Carson Mounted Color Guard. 
Stick around after the rodeo for autographs from contestants, the girls of the West, and the Pikes Peak Rangerettes. Then head on over to the Coors Roadhouse Saloon for live music, dancing, and plenty of ice cold Coors. Our local military are honored at each and every performance. Fort Carson on Wednesday evening, missile defense and first responders on Thursday evening, Air Force Space Command on Friday evening, the United States Air Force Academy at the Saturday matinee, and NORAD US Northcom on Saturday evening. The Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo has proudly been supporting our local military and their families since 1946. Rodeo season kicks off with some other great events that our community loves. Join us bright and early June 19th from 5.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. for the annual Colorado Springs Western Street Breakfast and the official send-off for the Pikes Peak Range Riders annual ride. Enjoy the $5 breakfast prepared and served by active duty military volunteers. Breakfast includes eggs, pancakes, milk, coffee, and juice, and is free for children five and under. And for all those little cowboys and cowgirls ages three to 10, Help them get on their Western gear and accessories to compete in the Little Cowboys and Cowgirls Roundup. Also held June 19th at the Street Breakfast. There'll be great prizes and the winners get to ride on a float in the rodeo's parade. Speaking of the parade, what better way to kick off Rodeo Week than with the 79th Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo Parade. It will be held on Tuesday, July 9th at 6.30 p.m. right here in downtown Colorado Springs on Tejon Street from St. Frame to Vermaho. This beloved Western cultural event is free to attend and fun for the whole family. So we want you to mark your calendars, buy your tickets, and get ready for championship rodeo action at its best. The dates again for the Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo are Wednesday, July 10th through Saturday, July 13th. Save time and save money by purchasing your tickets online now as advanced ticket pricing ends on June 30th. You can find all this information and much more on our website, pikespeakerbus.org. We'll see you at the 79th Pike Speaker Bus Rodeo, July 10th through the 13th at the Norris Penders Event Center in Colorado Springs. Awesome. All right, well, let's bring it up here for some deliberation, and then we'll uh, uh, recess to take a picture. Who wants to kick us off? Commissioner Williams. So this year I was able to go to the Latigo, um, the foundation's fundraise out at Latigo. It was a very, I hadn't ever been there. It was very beautiful. I did not know there was a game called BS Bingo. Um, <laughs> And that was kind of an interesting thing to watch. So, um, but then there were also some kid games and um, I didn't try any of those for fear I would try to go fishing and accidentally hit someone in the crowd behind me <laughs> with the hook. So, um, but we're really excited. Uh, I was looking forward to hearing you guys speak this year. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Brummer. Um, I, I am just excited, and I have a four-year-old who is equally as excited uh, for the pancake breakfast that he attended actually for the first time last year um, and had a good time donning his overalls and bandana, and I think we'll up the game a little bit with his outfit this year. I'm super excited about that uh, street breakfast. But, you know, in the in the bigger scheme of things, I'm, I'm a Georgia girl, and... Um, you know, I'm often um, explaining to my family some of the the, the uniqueness um, that that is here, right here in El Paso County, and um, and it's quite um, sometimes it's surprising to them the similarities. Actually, I'm from I'm a I'm a farmer's daughter from rural South Georgia. So, um, and my sister grew up grew up riding and was um, actually a Division One. Um, uh, equestrian champion at the University of Georgia. So um, so it's in my history and in my blood here, and I think perfectly appropriate that this is where I landed, this is where I love, and I hope one day I can um, pull them out here during that second week of July to enjoy and see this as well. Man, this is always one of my favorite times of the year. I love uh, getting to participate in the uh, uh, all of the celebrations that go on with the uh, street breakfast and uh, the rodeo and, and things of that nature. And I'm super glad you finally mentioned my favorite event at the uh, rodeo, Mutton Bustin. I think that should be featured more prominently. You know, it's uh, some pretty serious stuff that's happening out there. You know, those kids holding on for dear life. 
uh, as the sheep run off, it's pretty cool to see. Um, but, but I'll tell you, and this is, you know, for my colleagues up here on the uh, dais, you know, I've been going to this rodeo for several years now, and you get an opportunity to really learn a lot about uh, not only Western heritage, but, you know, what it takes to be in a rodeo. And so I've tried to channel that at our county fair over the last few years, and that's why I am the... <laughs> You know, quit shaking your head, Commissioner Gonzalez. That's, that's why I am the hay bale calf roping champion uh, of the Board of County Commissioners. So um, thank you. Thank you. That's the self-proclaimed, by the way, hay, hay bale calf roping champion. May I break in here? You, Who no, taught you how to it, lasso? I, I learned it at the rodeo. I, of course, I learned it at the rodeo. Who taught you? The rodeo. So, uh, Does the anyway, hay bale actually move? It, no, that's part of the beauty of it. So it doesn't move. Um, but, uh, you know, but y you guys need to get out to the fair or get out to the rodeo and, you know, figure this out. And then maybe somebody can try to dethrone me uh, later on this year when we get to the county fair. Uh, boy, um, I don't think anybody else wants to say anything, do they? Commissioner Gonzalez? No? Okay. Let's move on. No, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. With all due respect, I think there's a uh, controversy on who won that lasso contest a couple years back. Uh, but, uh, you know, so uh, this Western Heritage is always one of my favorite times of the, of the year in the summer. And, uh, you know, getting to the rodeos and the fairs are, and all the other events is just uh, so much great fun. Uh, I was intrigued by a couple things. The, the bullfighting uh, I thought was uh, something that intrigued me. I, I do hear that the, uh, the Mexican Heritage Bulls are the toughest and the smartest, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, I do think, uh, when, when looking back, uh, I was an Air Force Academy grad, and uh, that freshman year during basic training, there's only two positive, memorable moments that I have. Uh, and uh, one was the chaplain's picnic, and the other was the Air Force Academy's uh, uh, matinee uh, at the uh, rodeo. And so uh, the fond memories, uh, I think I mention this story every year, but it's a fond memory that I have uh, from my freshman year at the Academy. So uh, it's something I always look forward to, and it's just something I, I'm just very happy that we have here uh, for our heritage. And so with that, thank you very much. All right. Uh, so we've been moved and seconded. And uh, with that, I will call the roll. Commissioner Bremer. Yeehaw, aye. <laughs> Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That passes unanimously with Commissioner Vanderwerf excused. We will stand in recess for a picture. <laughs>